Hello, we are the group of Now we are going to introduce one of the most famous name reaction, Hench dihydropyridine synthesis. This video is separated into four parts, which includes the history of the reaction, mechanism of it, application, and furthermore, the up-to-date improvement. Now, let's get into the first part, history. In 1881, German chemist Arthur Ruder of Hench discovered a multi-component organic reaction, which is for the production of 1,4-dihydropyridine, whose name is also known as DHPs. This famous Hench pyridine synthesis is named after him afterwards. It is a very important name reaction to synthesize anti-hypertension drugs or even anti-cancer reagent, according to Miri's work. In eight, in two thousand and thirteen, here is the total reaction of Hench DHP synthesis, where condensation happening between an aldehyde and two equivalent beta ketone ester in the presence. Of ammonia. Interestingly, the reactance of this reaction was first reported as three components: acetoacetic ester, benzaldehyde, and ammonia or uh, all ammonia salts. Some of the products have been proven that their therapeutic success is related to their efficiency to bind to calcium channels and consequently to decrease the passage of the transmembrane calcium current associated in smooth muscle with the long-lasting reaction and in cardiac muscle with the reduction of contractility throughout the heart. Because of that, the importance of this synthesis led to the improvement of this reaction, including two methods classical multi-component method and microwave assisted synthesis. Meanwhile, an environmentally friendly method was also investigated in recent years. Li Yang Zhu will, will also show you details. Okay, welcome to this section. In this section, we will learn the mechanism of hench dihydropyridine synthesis. This reaction can be divided into two parts. First is auto condensation followed by micro addition. Let me show you the details. Okay, this is total reaction of Hench dihydropyridine synthesis. The aldehyde will react with two equivalent beta ketone ester and form 1,4 dihydropyridine under the catalyze of ammonia. In terms of auto condensation, as we can see here, one beta ketone ester molecule will, under, uh, will undergo analyte formation by the ammonia catalyzing after losing a, a alpha hydrogen and form a carbon anion, which will attack the carbonyl group in aldehyde and form a new carbon carbon bond here. And the R group in aldehyde will be introduced into the beta ketone ester molecule. After we losing one water molecule by proton transfer, we will get alpha beta unsaturated ketone. And this molecule will react as starting material for the next step, microaddition. So moving on to the microaddition, this is molecule we synthesized in the first step and this will be attacked by the carbon anion uh, from another beta ketone ester molecule. However, the carbonyl group in another molecule is replaced by the enamine. So here is the reaction. The ammonia will attack the carbonyl group in another beta ketone ester molecule and after losing the hydroxide group, we will get the uh, endomine here. And this endomine will help to form the final ring. If you are confused, uh, if it's, it is microaddition, we can reference in the uh, reaction 
posted in textbook. So this carbon anion here will attack the carbon carbon bond, a double bond, and form a 1 5 diketone. So here we also have uh, the 1 5 diketone. Yeah, so it's microaddition. Well, this molecule re uh, act as micro donor and this act as micro scepter. So after automerization, we will see there the in the main group have uh, another long pair electron which is nucleophilic and will attack the carbonyl group to form the six members ring here yeah. and after proton transfer losing one water molecule we will get one for the hydroperidine so this reaction will end up uh, getting these molecules by our group in the aldehyde uh, from aldehyde are uh, successfully introduced into the whole ring and the uh, the people can replace uh, our group by any other functional group so to synthesize numerous molecules so that's why this reaction is very useful and meaningful in organic chemistry so another partner Panstrom will give you guys uh, illustrate the one of the most important application for hench dihydroperidine synthesis hello there I'm Zhong Pan, and I will introduce you something about applications of um, hydroperidine in organic synthesis. There are three applications in this part. First of all, hydroperidine had been convinced that it can block the calcium channel in 1971. However, we cannot authorize it directly because it is a hydrophilic agent and it may be degraded by liver first, uh, first part effect. We need to modify structure to use it uh, as more as possible. Nifedipine is a famous classic drug which produced by Bayer in 1975. It has near perfect drug with its long term effect, efficiency, and the smooth effect for hypertension and the edema pectoris. In this PPT, there are classic uh, reactions which use the hydroperidine as a lead compound. Aldehyde reacts with beta ketone, reaction with. Um, ester in the environment of ammonia, and the nephedipine has been has been formed. Another application of hydroperidine is reactant. You can see in its reaction, quinoline is a raw raw reagent, and hydroperidine can reduce it to its reduced form with the help of phosphate. Also, that hydroperidine can reduce other double bonds in some special environments or catalysis. You can see here this double bond has been has been reduced into the, the single bond. Last but not least, people are not uh, are always not pleased about current synthesis reaction. Here are some advanced synthesis methods nowadays. A normal adhere reacts with two equilibrium diketone compound with the help of ammonia actate PTSA and SDS. This reaction can be formed can be performed in the room temperature and uh, just one hour and the hydroperidine can be formed. So we can we know that it's quicker than the classic method because the classic method maybe needs uh, one day or two days. One day or two days. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gibson. I will tell you the way to improve the reaction. The two methods of improving the reaction will be given below. According to the report of the Hench in 1881, the formation of the flux requires a reflux in a period of 12 hours by three materials. The classical improvement involves the use of the performed adducts between the aldehyde and the ketoester or the use of the performed enamel esters. Other drugs such as nephodafi and negrodafi are considered useful to undergo redox environment and be related to the catalysis of the cardiochrome P450 in the liver during the metabolism. The reaction has attracted considerable attention to find a new way 
to improve the yields. The interesting thing is, when the scientists started the oxidation of the 1,4-DHP, which is involved in stimulating in the in vivo transformation of the drugs, the yield of the DHPs were increased under microwave variation, ranging from 15 to 92 percent in only several minutes. Here is the process of the development of the microwave assisted synthesis from initially to the finally. In the recent years, the microwave irradiation has been successfully used to promote the reaction yield. However, all the reported oxidation procedures suffer from the use of the organic solvent. Therefore, the use of the water as a reaction medium has attracted heating attention as a kind of environmental friendly chemistry in the recent years, which promotes the scientists perform these kind of reactions in pure water. Therefore, the current procedure is more easy and friendly to environment.